your Catholic Drive Time with Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Praise be to Jesus Christ in all things. Thank you, Emily, for keeping us up to date on the headline news. Uh, joining us right now by Zoom chat is Monsignor Charles Pope. He is uh, a dean and a pastor in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., and a f- frequent contributor to the National Catholic Register. It's great to have you on, Monsignor. Good morning to you. Yeah, it's good to hear. Uh, good to see you and hear you both. Amen. Praise be to Jesus Christ in all things. Uh, so we, we were seeing this uh, article come out at the end of the 2020, five hard truths we've come to see with 2020 vision, but you've since come out with five more. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, tell me that's the extent of all the hard truths, right? There's no, there's 10, that's it, there's no more than 10. But we thought that it would be a, a good conversation to to start with this, these two articles that you put out, but I also want to get your input on this week uh, in Washington, D.C., your very backyard, and what your, how you saw the optics of what was going on there. Um, maybe we can start with the hard truths first. Tell us about your article, The Five Hard Truths of 2020. Yeah, well, I did, I did it in two parts um, because I wanted to um, look at kind of the worldly picture and then inside the church and so my second article focuses more on if you will in in, in, you know inside the church um so that's that's how i divide it so yeah 10 hard truths (laughs) but at the end of the day i think um that's the um that's why i i did it in two parts well, let's go over the truths here. Uh, number mm-hmm. one, in the first article, it was fear uh, can be coercive. Yeah. Uh, number two was the other things and other people matter as well. Uh, number three yeah. was the ability to dissent is rapidly disappearing. And number four was those who question are demonized. Number five was respect for authority is plummeting. Tell us why you picked those five in the first article. Well, my biggest concern as a, as a Catholic and a, a Christian um, and a priest and a disciple of Jesus is how fear has so utterly captured us. I mean, I can't, you know, look, let's, I, I, first of all, let me uh, just for just, you know, to be clear, I, I had COVID. I had it bad. I was 11 days in the ICU. Wow. I mean, I was in respiratory failure. I almost died. Mm. Um, I know COVID can be bad for some people like me. I have pulmonary issues. I have, but honestly, this thing kills less than 1% of its victims. Mm. And we are all running around in like a panic as if this was, you know, you COVID was a death sentence and it, it just, it, it isn't, uh, for 99 99- Ninety-nine percent of the people, of course, of course, all the age groups. Now you start to get into your seventies and eighties; it's going to be more serious for you. Yes, I get that, but at the end of the day, I would never ask everybody to simply surrender their life, close their businesses, for uh, just so that I don't get sick. I have responsibility for my health, and I, I have to talk to my doctors. So I think at the end of the day, um, my um, my concern is that. Uh, Fear has so utterly gripped us. And part of it is that we don't have any, in our culture, not, you know, we don't have any, death and suffering have no meaning. They're meaningless. There's something to be avoided at all costs. And paradoxically, if, if, if uh, somebody, you know, does suffer a lot, then they should be able to have position-assisted suicide. I mean, this is just, there's no meaning. And yet that is completely contradictory to the gospel. Mm. Yeah, and in actually you quoted in that first point Hebrews chapter two verse fourteen, um, yeah. which says that the fear of death is slavery. So, in your opinion, Monsignor Pope, what's the proper way to view death mm-hmm. for a Catholic? Yeah, well, if if you're faithful, now that's an important <laughs> criteria, Emily. <laughs> if if you're faithful, the day you die is the greatest day of your life. I mean, you get to Amen. leave this mm-hmm. lun- lunatic asylum that we're living in right now. And go home and be with God, who called you, wrote His name on your heart. And yeah, you probably. I'm. I'm. I'm going to be. I'm just going to say. I'll, I'll be going through purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. <laughs> but at the end of the day, even that's healing. It's cleansing, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to be with God forever. I, as I lay on my uh, bed there in the hospital, I, I thought I very well could die from this. And uh, I said, Lord, part of me wants to come home and be with you, but I know part of me. Gosh, Lord, part of me wants to just come home and be with you, but I know I have to, I have other things to do. You, you decide Lord, but 
Mm. Yeah. So anyway, he decided to keep me for this world for a little longer because I ain't par- apparently I'm not ready yet. <laughs> mm. Monsignor, do you think that the reason so many people are afraid of death is because they're not prepared for it? Yeah, I, I think so. But also, um, I, I, you know, I think one of the greatest heresies today that almost 90% of Catholics hold, even those who go to church regularly, is that there's no such thing as really as judgment um, or, or hell in, in, in our future. Even though Jesus spoke of it constantly and warned us. Um, so there, it's kind of the, there's a denial of the doctrine of, of uh, judgment and hell. And I, mm. I think that you're right. We don't have a sober fear. When I say sober, I mean not, not cringing fear. But look, I, this is something to get ready for. I need, I need to live a life that's worthy so that when I go to God, I can say, look, um, by your grace alone, you know, I've, 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 I've lived, this, I've lived this way and I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I, I want what you're offering. You know? mm. We're talking with Monsignor Charles Pope. He is a pastor in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. about his, uh, he has two articles on National Catholic Register uh, called The Five Hard Truths is the first one and the, and five more hard truths from the second one. Thanks for that follow up there, Monsignor. Very nice. Very kind of you to give us even more to, to ponder and emphasize. But it's an important conversation we're having. Um, we're going to link to these articles on our video feeds on the Facebook side. Again, uh, facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time is uh, sort of the central place we talk about, but uh, the Station of the Cross is also now streaming us live uh, today. So th- we're grateful for that. But Monsignor, um, w- the the com- the conversation around the dissenting voices and being sort of uh, censored and and ostracized is really taken a big turn on the wrong direction oh. in the last several weeks. What say you on that topic? We have one minute before we go to break. By the way. Oh, okay. Um, I, I have never been so concerned for our country as I am right now, and because free speech is such a pillar pillar of the American experience. And now it's not just the government, it's these oligarchs who run Twitter and, uh, you know, Facebook and YouTube or wherever, you know, I mean, you, you can be out in a second if you say something they don't like. And, they, you know, they're private companies, but at the end of the day, they're, they're, they're proposing to offer platforms where people can speak, but they're not, they're lying. And um, so you will say what we want you to say, or you will be silenced. And this is dangerous. So, and I, I, I have often, you know, been um, uh, spoken about, you know, these, these kinds hold of things. Hold that thought. So I know we got just a little less than... Monsignor, I'm going to ask you to hold that thought right there. We'll carry that conversation forward on the other side of this break. We're talking with Monsignor Charles Pope about his articles. But on the other side of the break, I also want to get him to comment about how he saw what has taken place over the last couple of weeks in Washington, D.C., his very backyard, the very city where he was gone to preach sent by Christ himself. So we'll have that conversation next. We're having a conversation with Monsignor Charles Pope, a pastor and dean in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. I cut you off right as you were going to break there. We're talking about censorship, Monsignor. I also want to get you to give me your take on the uh, on the events that's transpired over the last couple of weeks uh, at our nation's yeah. capital. Uh, you being a, 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 a D.C. native, I guess, uh, maybe yeah. you can tell us how what you saw, how you thought of it all. Um, I'd love to have your input there. But go, if you want to start up where you left off, that's fine too. Well, again, you know, just I think the suppression of any dissenting voices is, 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 is it, everybody, everybody should be alarmed by this. I le- right, left, you know, it, this is not good. So that that would be the final point of that. As far as living here inside the hot zone, um, I'm 14 up. I'm 14 blocks up from the Capitol, and um, I, I mean, I couldn't believe. Th- is this is this my city, or is this Mogadishu, or is this Belfast, or, or, or Beijing? Wire and walls, <laughs> and 25,000 National Guard troops. Mm. Really? Now, I know that we had a terrible thing happen at the Capitol, and it was wrong, and it shouldn't happen. But somewhere, we've lost, I think, it, it almost looked more like political theater yes, than, mm. uh, than, it, than, than really an honest response mm-hmm. to the threat. Um, why don't you hold the thing indoor if you're that scared, you know? But, right. um, I mean, who could even go? Nobody could even go to the inauguration. By the way, I, 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 I want to say I'm praying for Joe Biden. He's our president. 
and I have every obligation to pray for him. And I have differences, obviously, with some of his policies. But um, you know, somewhere along the line, we, it, this this was a this was just you know uh, just well, it's not the city I grew up in. It's not it's not this is not the country I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a as a a man who served in the Marine Corps, I found it very offensive. Uh, that they and insulting that they would vet all these troops, you know, and mm-hmm. question their loyalty, yeah. b- especially because of the color of their skin. That was a big issue. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, and now that they're done, they don't, <laughs> they're not needed. They can be kicked out of the hotel beds and be put into a parking garage to sleep. At least a portion yeah. of them, anyway. Uh, it's very insulting to uh, to use them as theater. Uh, in yeah. this way, it's a, sh- a show of force. I mean, that's why else would you want National Guard troops from every fifty state, every state in the union had to send their troops uh, as mm-hmm. a part of a showing that this is n- uh, a transfer of power and authority. It, it really yeah. was. It really did feel like theater. I wonder, um, and I would love to interview some of the, the, the troops there to get their take, but I'm sure um, I, had, I did ask a friend who is active duty right now, and he basically said, we're not allowed to comment anything at all ever on political yeah. conversation anymore because they're all watching. Yeah. Well, last night as I drove into the city again from, I, I, I waved at a lot of them because they're all bivouacked, a lot of them right here in my, right just a few blocks away oh, wow. at the armory. And I waved at them and I thanked them and, um, yeah, you're my heroes. Yeah, uh, father, the uh, or Monsignor rather, uh, the one of our a friend of mine, her grandfather is being uh, is in the COVID ward or is in uh, the hospital, and because of COVID, they're still uh, to this day, January 2021, uh, they're still not allowing him to receive the last yeah. rites in confession. And she was asking, please pray for him because. He's uh he hasn't been to confession in fifty years, and they mm-hmm. won't allow a priest to come see him. And yeah. uh, I, what do we what do we how do we respond to this? What do we do? You know, I, I was in the uh, ICU for eleven days, and likewise the same problem. And this was I, I won't you know be too specific, but I'll just say I was at a Catholic hospital, and they wouldn't let the chaplain come in and see me. Now nurses and doctors came in, they donned all these you know visors and mask and you know all the protective gear but if a doctor or a nurse can come in um is not the care of the soul even more important we have lost our way and that's part of one of the points i made in my articles that um somewhere along the line we've lost our way we we think that all that matters is the body heck with sacraments they're just dumb rituals i mean i don't i don't mean that we're literally saying that but that's the message mm. I think that people are getting. And, um, you know, it, it was a, a shot. And by the way, the, the priest at this hospital was a good man. He called me almost every day, but he couldn't come in <laughs> and give me what I really needed, which was Jesus. Wow. <laughs> That's horrible. He said, only if you're in articulo mortis, literally at the point of dying, can I come in there? And I'm like, wow. okay, well. I was there two days ago, but you know, again, that, that was down in the emergency room. I get that. He's good, but but he's a good man. Don't don't get me wrong. It's not it's not the priest. It was a policy, and this is we've lost our way. Yeah. That that was one of the things in 2020 that I was most uh, disgruntled about. That really upset me. I remember it was it was Good Friday, and knowing that the highest feast day in, on our calendar, Easter Sunday, was canceled. Yeah. We weren't allowed to go to Holy Mass yeah. on Easter Sunday. I was so hurt by that. Uh, and so so bitter. Yeah. I was so bitter at the hierarchy of the church for that. Uh, I remember trying to. St- my wife was like, "We got to stream the mass for the kids," and I'm streaming this mass at the house in our home chapel. And I'm just like, I'm 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 angry. I'm frustrated. And I was so disconnected from Holy Mass yeah. uh, that I wanted to throw throw my TV out the door. And I just I and I say that in, in just to. Be honest and sincere about how I felt about that. But one of the takeaways from that was, where is the supernatural faith uh, among our our hierarchy in these difficult and troubling times? Um, Where is the supernatural faith to say the sacraments have greater weight, power, and authority than anything of the material world? And yet... We are holding them back. The most incredible medicine we can offer the planet, we are restraining and preventing. It just seems terrible to it's me. It's a crime, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Emily, what you're saying, it feels almost like a crime. I, I can't begin to tell you 
how much I wept on um, the second Sunday of Lent when mass public masses were shut down in mm. the diocese. And now, by the way, our bishop, Cardinal Gregory, was actually very generous. Uh, we didn't he didn't require us to lock the churches. I did everything I could to keep the sacraments available to people. I heard confessions. We had a Eucharistic adoration, and just between just between you and me and whoever, ten, ten, you know, ten million other people who are listening. Um, <laughs> Very um, generous of you, my is, senior. Is that I, I continue to give. If people say, I need, I need Holy Communion, Father. I give it to them. Mm. You know, outside of Mass, we have to be more creative. That's one of the points mm-hmm. I make in those articles. And if this ever happens again, where we can't have big public gatherings, and I understand from a public health perspective, you know, the concerns, you know, when you have a pandemic. But at the end of the day, if we really, really need to ever do this again, I hope never again. But um, I just hope that we'll be more creative. We don't just shut things down. We'll say, well, look, Father, you get sacraments to people outside of Mass, have them come in in rotations. But whatever we can do to make sure that people can get the sacraments that are so precious and necessary for us. Yeah, and I've said this before on the radio, but... Uh, I think it's worth repeating. It's It was the great uh, philosopher, drill instructor Sergeant Mercado, who said, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. And uh, I felt like there was no will for the longest time last year to uh, provide right. for, to find a way to adapt, to overcome, to improvise, and to, uh, you know, accomplish our mission. It just felt like there was no will. And I likened, uh, I had this conversation with Bishop Strickland on the radio, and I was saying to him, you know, imagine, Bishop, if I said to my children, I'm sorry, uh, you know, uh, because of the situation, you're now no longer able to enter my bedroom. I'm going to shut the door. You're not allowed to come in and visit with your mom and I. You know, we'll, here's a letter. I'll pass it through the door. You can read the letter. And I'll have a live video stream. You can you can hang out with us, about, you know, by live video. Imagine if I would have said those things, the the shock, the awe, the confusion of my children. Well, that's how we're feeling, and, and mm-hmm. I hope and pray that that doesn't uh, happen again. But with only, uh, I guess, four minutes left in our conversation, before we run out of time, I want to look forward, 2021, we now have the second Catholic president in our nation's history, and yet he is a man who, who definitely does embrace what we call uh, grave uh, immoralities, uh, intrinsic evils, abortion. He doesn't support mm-hmm. uh, traditional marriage, euthanasia, in vitro fertilization, contraception, all of these things. Uh, how do you, how, what do we do here? How do you feel about this? How do you see it? Uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes on the clock. I recently gave a retreat to 25 bishops in the Midwest, and uh, they were all concerned, too. There are There is a commission on the USCCB that is trying to set up a a process where the bishops can agree and work with the administration um, and make decisions about, you know, um, how to approach them collectively. And I think that's, that's one thing, but a number of bishops, uh, even including my own, I mean, he's publicly come out and said, look, we're not going to politicize Holy Communion. Well, um, the, um, at the end of the day, I think, um, we, I, I think we, the bishops have to give a comprehensive teaching on the, the worthiness to receive Holy Communion. Because honestly, there, there's a lot of people on a Sunday morning who shouldn't come forward for communion. It's not just them. We, we don't want to appear to be singling them out. Um, because people will just take that as politics. And they're going to misinterpret us. I, I just don't want someone to come forward and receive Holy Communion unworthily because that can bring their condemnation. Yeah. God bless them. Yeah. And I really care about Joe Biden. I don't want him to go to hell. Amen. Praise God. And I, I noticed that you looked at me strange when you said uh, some people shouldn't come to communion. I wonder <laughs> I wonder what you meant by I that. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. But uh, we, we have about a minute and a half left. Uh, maybe you can leave us with, uh, you know, what, how do we go from here? How should our, priestly blessing. Our pr- oh, how please. should our prayer life uh, take us from here, Monsignor Charles Pope? Pray, pray, pray. I, I, all I can say is, you know, I go before the Lord and I, I feel just, just desolate at times with the situation we're in today. And I say, you know, and I said, well, Char- Car- he always calls me Carlito, little Charlie. Um, Char- Carlito, this is not your pay grade. I want you to preach the gospel in season, out of season. Take care of the flock I entrust to you. If you have families, raise your children right. If you, if, you, if you have any influence over anything, whatever area of your life I've given you, you do that. Now listen, this, the rest of this is in my hands. Amen. All right. 
Well, God bless you, Monsignor Charles Pope. We're very grateful for you being on our program today and sharing your insights and your uh, and your inspirations. Uh, God love you. God bless you, and have a great day. Good. Bless you. Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. That's going to do it for Hour 1 of Catholic Drive Time, keeping you informed and inspired. If you can join us in the second hour, we'll stay live streaming on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. We'd love to have you. We've got the game show, more breaking news and stories, and a lot more Catholic Drive Time still to come. Until then, God love you. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.